Good evening, aviators. This is your uh, future captain speaking, Jetta, and welcome back to my channel. Thank you guys for tuning in on these podcasts. It means so much to me. And I just recently, my entire blog, like, between the website, Instagram, Facebook, um, YouTube, all of these different platforms, I just passed over a thousand followers, and it means so much, and I... I just, I have no words to explain how much that means to me because I never thought I would come this far on this journey. And so just being able to have the encouragement and the people to follow me um, along this journey has helped so much and it means the world and more. So this week, uh, the kind of the theme, I guess, is legends never die, they keep flying. And one, one of the questions that I wanted to start out with, and usually I don't do this, but I want you guys to think about this question during the whole podcast. And it's, what would you do if you were told you were going to die tomorrow? So just be thinking about that through the podcast. Um, But other than that, awesome, let's go. All right, so I just kind of wanted to touch on the fact that people who inspire you you should be using that to your advantage. So I remember when I was younger, reading about Amelia Earhart, I didn't really know too much about her at all, actually. And it just kind of came to me that maybe I should research a little bit more. So in the seventh grade, I ended up doing a project about her. And it was a biography which I really enjoyed doing because I was able to expand my horizons about, you know, what she did, uh, what I wanted to do, and how can she inspire me. So when I was writing this biography, something kind of stood out to me, and it was her audacity to do something that wasn't normal. So, well, I mean, at the time, they didn't want females to fly they just the females were just meant to stay home which I have personal opinions about that and they are very strong and I don't think that um females should stay home actually I feel like we should be able to go out explore the world just like anybody else anyway so continuing on I was able to kind of dig a little bit deeper and she had the audacity to be the first female to cross the Atlantic uh, flying an aircraft, which was really unheard of at the time. And, and Amelia, she, she wanted to be different. She wanted it. She didn't, she didn't want to fit into the cultural normal, which is something that I want to do as well. I don't want to be a cultural normal. And she has inspired me to drift away from what's considered normal, I guess. But in a sense of flying, she was able to figure out all of this and put it, and piece it all together so that she could succeed. And then that's when we kind of get into things like, well, what what is success? What what's success? What's you know change? What's important? But you know. She she really kind of fed off of the negative energy. She fed off of people hating her. And that was tough. I'm sure that was tough. Um, I know it's tough. I've had that experience. But to be someone that hasn't faced it necessarily every day, I guess I only understand what she went through only 50%. So just to kind of think of, well, what did she go through and what was her experience like flying? But to me, it seems like that she fed off of the people that hated her. She found motivation in that and she was able to find passion and drive. And so she was able to complete all of these feats that no one even, no one even thought of at the time, but she wanted it and That's why she inspires me because she wanted something. She worked for it despite all the curveballs that were thrown at her and she succeeded. But in, and you know, you also had the Wright brothers who faced the same challenges. I would presume that 
back in the, you know, during that time, people thought flying was impossible. But yet they still have this vision and they were visionary people who thought of the future as, well, what if we could do this? What if we could improve that? But let's bring flight to life, you know, because powered flight at the time, it was only like hot air balloons and probably parachutes um, that were invented. It was unpowered flight, but they wanted to create something new and create change well, lo and behold, they were able to. After several trials and errors and, and pushing through what probably people thought. like I, And it drives me insane because what's in the history books is probably way different than what actually happened. Because I've always wondered, well, what, what kind of adversity did they truly face? Were they mocked and scorned because people told them, you know, you're stupid, flying, that's impossible, it's never gonna exist, but yet here they, here they actually did it, um, and I look at the evolution of flight, you know, uh, unpowered flight, hot air balloons, and then we go over to the Wright Brothers powered Wright flyer, then we continue up and up and up, you know, P-51s, you have, um, I think, A lot of those World War II planes were definitely a miracle, I would say, in my opinion. Because they were pretty much scrapped together, I guess you could say. There wasn't like an official plan, really, from what I understand. But, you know, you have the P-51, you have the B-52, B-25s, you have the T-6, and then a little bit... Later, you have the MD-11. Then you have the Boeing 707, 717. And then the Boeing 747, which really, like, revolutionized aviation. And and Pan American World Airways brought that to life. Um, they're no longer uh, an airline anymore. But they they really brought the life to Boeing, to the airlines and then you have later on like airbus a330 a320 a321 boeing triple seven seven eighty seven um a380 then you also have like antonov and bombardier embraer it's really crazy how far we've come but then like general aviation is a little bit more like cirruses cessnas pipers um, Kit Fox, you have Carbon Cubs. It it's crazy to think how we went from old like analog gauges all the way up to the G one thousand, which is what I'm learning off of. So really, in every aspect, if you think about it, we are all pioneers. We are all um, heroes in some way, like. There's, for me, there's no definition, there's no like set in stone definition of what is a hero. Because if you were to ask me what a hero is, I would be like, I don't know. I don't know. Someone who did something great to make a change, to make a difference. But I, I have no set in stone definition. Like anybody can be a hero. Anybody can do anything they put their mind to, especially, especially like nowadays, you know, but then you also had like Charles Lindbergh, who set new goals, set new achievements for the industry. Um, these pioneers really pushed planes to their limits um, with fuel, uh, carrying capacity, you know, distance. We, we often, I think, overthink all of this. And it's kind of heartbreaking in a way because I really want to show the world that Yes, anything is possible. These people have proved it, but I kind of feel like I need to prove it again in some way. It's quite strange to think about, but like the moral of the story is that it's just important to realize that where we are now is because of those who came before us. So we need to honor that and and really fixate that on that and thank these people, remember them. But then you also have, like, Jackie Cochran, 
who helped organize the WASPs in during the wars. Uh, the Women Air Force Service pilots, they would help deliver and kind of exchange parts across America. They would fly back and forth, uh, resupply, which I thought was pretty cool. And at the time, you know, that's really when the female revolution came of, you know, females rising up and getting a job, going to work, um, being normal, I'd say. But then you also had, you know, all of these other thinkers that really put things to the test. Rosie the Riveter, uh, maintenance. She was pretty cool. I love her poster. I am, I have a couple like memorabilia that's Rosie the Riveter, but she really kind of put a new perspective on things and pioneered aviation in a way that it, it changed for maintenance. It changed for pilots. Um, it changed for navigators and, and, um, air traffic controllers, all of these, all of these things. But a little bit more modern, like today pioneers, the best one I could probably think of is Patty Wagstaff, a famous air show pilot. She has definitely, definitely impressed millions with her aerobatic flying skills and uh, <laughs> testing the limits of an aircraft to the max. Um, she does air shows all over America. I have not been to one yet, but definitely, definitely on the bucket list. So along with Patty Wagstaff, you also have Jessica Cox. She flies with her feet. She was born with no arms, tested and tried the limits of aviation, aircraft, and herself. And she flies with her feet. How amazing. But you also have influencers on YouTube who also inspire, such as Dutch Pilot Girl, Captain Joe, um, 47 Gear, and so many more pilots. And I also have all of my pilots' friends who inspire me to keep going and pioneer this industry to the way it's supposed to go. Anyways, so now that we kind of talked about and highlighted some people that are in aviation and that were in aviation. Um, but once a pilot, always a pilot. So are in aviation. It's, it's important to kind of think about these people and reflect back on the past. And I know I only highlighted aviation because I'm in aviation. But there's also people like Albert Einstein and, you know, Louis Armstrong. You have Israel Kamaka Viva Ole. All of these people who pioneered certain industries that work together to build something. And to me, that's what a hero is. They work together to build something. They create something new. They create some sort of change. Not necessarily helping people all the time, but they create a change. Like, the... One of the musicians that I look up to the most has to be Israel Kamaka Viva Ole because he, he revolutionized, you know, he brought Hawaiian island music to fame. He, he kind of revolutionized the music industry and changed it, made the ukulele, ukulele uh, famous, which I play the ukulele and I love it. So I kind of, it's time to just remember these people. Remember who got all of us to where we are today. Because just because you were born a certain year and you are where you are today doesn't mean that someone else helped you get there. Um, so just kind of going along with that, it's, it's really interesting. So what do you want to do to inspire the world, to be a hero, to create change what do you want to do to make a difference and create hope and endless possibilities? You know, there's, there's no limit. There's no limit to what you can do. You, 
as long as someone puts their mind to something, 100% possible. And I can definitely attest to that because I never thought I would be a pilot. I never thought I would solo. I never thought I would do anything really to um, achieve the goals that I want. But yet here I am really kind of revolutionizing something and changing what people think. You know, doing something that someone thought was probably impossible, including myself. I knew people had flown planes before me. I knew about Amelia Earhart, about, you know, Charles Lindbergh. I knew about all of them. But one thing that that I didn't realize was that I myself could do it. I didn't know that until I actually did it. Because honestly, it's tough. It's tough being a pilot. It It's such a rigorous industry, a rigorous program. You're not going to stop learning. Um, there's, there's no way that I'm ever going to stop learning. Every day is a new day. Nothing's the same. You know, you learn one thing and then the next day it's something else. One day you're talking about something random like NDBs and navigation, which NDBs don't really exist anymore. And then the other day, the next day you're talking about weather and weather services and reports. Or like one day you're flying and you're doing the VOR approach into Cedar City. And then the next day you're doing steep turns. I mean... There's, there's nothing that's the same. There's, it constantly changes. And so it, it forces you to be adaptable, dependable, a good communicator, uh, disciplined. Because if you're not disciplined, you're not going to be able to, you know, succeed in the industry. Because no two days are the same. Like, seriously, it's like a fingerprint. No two fingerprints are the same. Anyways, it's just been something on my mind to just kind of go back and reflect on the past. And because it's Mental Health Awareness Month, I think we could all benefit from kind of taking a step back and reflecting on the past instead of the present. But who has inspired you and who has inspired you to keep going with what you're passionate about? Because... There's endless opportunities. There's endless experiences. And I know that this world is full of so much potential. And you can do something so small right now to change something so big. And honestly, if you can dream it, it's totally possible to do it. And I have definitely seen so many miracles flying at 10,000 feet, at 10,500 feet than any other day of my life. I've seen so many miracles flying solo by myself, alone in the cockpit, you know, pressing buttons, doing landings than any other day of my life. You know, it. I never really saw, like, I never recognized a miracle until I flew by myself for the first time. The miracle of flight, lift, weight, thrust, and drag is beyond anything I could compare it to. The initial moment your wheels leave the ground is the moment you'll never forget. The first time I flew on a 7 bin 37 was one I'll never forget. When those wheels left the ground, the first time I flew in a Cirrus SR20, when those wheels left the ground, It was absolute marvelous. I have no words to put behind aviation. I have no thoughts to even... It's hard to even expel words to describe what is felt 10-5. Even a thousand feet above the ground at typical pattern altitude. It's so hard. It's so rigorous. It's painful. There's blood, sweat, and tears that get put into this. And yet, it's worth it. It's so worth eight hours of studying a day. 
it it's beyond compare and i i keep reflecting back on the pioneers the aviation pioneers who came before me and i can't help but think and thank them for their amazing service for their effort their long term suffering like not really suffering but metaphorically suffering to get the industry to where it is today because without them the g1000 wouldn't exist the cirrus wouldn't exist boeing wouldn't even exist you know piper all of these things delta airlines wouldn't even exist like this is an industry and it's a good one But I really just kind of wanted to bring all of this up and tie it all together like in a present or something because it's important to remember, you know, remember the past, but don't get too stuck on the future because you can use the present and the past to change the future. So I don't know, just something to think about. But anyways, so I'm about a week into IFR training. I am about 3.3 hours in the Cirrus IFR so far, and it has been amazing. Without a doubt, if you have faith and trust and hope, effort, you know, you're going to be just fine. With any industry you're going into, I know I have mechanics, I know I have pilots, I have people in so many other industries, you know, HVAC, film, um, I writing, so many like publications, law. I have so many people following me along this journey and I want to thank you all, no matter what industry you're in, no matter where you're from. I have people following me from every corner of this planet, and it's absolutely amazing. From Canada to Mexico to, I mean, to Africa, to Europe, Russia, um, Asia, Pacific Islands. It's, It's so amazing, and it's been such a blessing to come this far. And I look forward to the future because it's gonna be a good one. A real good one. Anyways, I hope you all are doing well. And please stay tuned for more content. I've been a little slow on publishing things within the past week. Because I have been pretty busy with studying and getting caught up with reading approach plates and departure plates. And I hope you all are doing well. Enjoy your week. And I will see you next week.